Hey everyone! UID format for unique identifiers is amazing and a very popular format, but it can be suboptimal for many use cases because it is the most character efficient format or most human readable format. You've seen UIDs in the URLs, it's quite long and it has dashes in it. UUID v1 and v2 are impractical in many environments because it requires access to stable and unique MAC address. Version 3 and version 5 uh, requires a unique seed, and version 4 has no other information than randomness in it. And the few projects I worked on used this ULID identifier or ULID, which I really enjoyed working with and I would love to share this experience with you, specifically for Go programs running on Postgres database, but obviously the same applies to other languages or to other databases. So let's review this format. And so on GitHub at ULID slash spec, we can see the full specification of the format. And by the way, ULID stands for Universally Unique Lexicographically Sortable Identifier. And this lexicographically part is really huge, and I'll show you it later. So what makes ULID so great? Let's start here right with this example of generated ID. As you can see, it's probably a little bit shorter than UID before. It has no special characters, so it's URL safe as well. Um, a very great thing about that that it's lexicographically sortable, right? You can properly sort your IDs on the database side or maybe in the application side. It's fully compatible with UUID, so you can convert uh, from ULI to UUID and vice versa. Um, it's a little bit shorter, I mentioned, right? It's case insensitive and so forth. Um, let's dive deeper. So obviously it has implementations in different languages, including Go, and here's the link to probably most popular um, library to work with that. And so if you look at this specification, there are two parts to this ID. It starts with 48 bits of the timestamp and then 80 bits of randomness. And so in total it's 128 bits of data, and that's how sorting is possible, right? Because the timestamp goes first. And so we may ask ourselves what happens uh, because we use timestamp, right? What happens if we generate many ULIDs in the same millisecond? Will it fail? Uh, will it generate duplicate IDs? Actually, it's very unlikely. As you can see, ULID uh, can generate more than 2 in power of 80 ULIDs within the same millisecond, and they all will be unique and sortable. Otherwise, the generation may even fail. And as it usually happens on this channel, Let's see it in action. Let's start comparing UUID v4, for example, with ULIT. So there are obviously other UUID versions, but v4 is the most popular nowadays. But before we start, you probably heard about this programming language called Rust. You also maybe want to get better at it. Let's get Rust is the go-to place for both corporate and personal Rust training. They are laser focused on Rust education and job placement. They help thousand developers to learn and master Rust. So huge thanks to Let's Get Rusty for sponsoring this video. And here's the good news. They're actually running a new cohort next month. Spots are limited, so now's the best time to check it out. Visit letsgetrusty.com slash start with package main to find out more about their training or simply click on the link in the pinned comment below the video. Okay, continue to our universal identifiers. Let's write quickly a Go program that inserts some records into the Postgres database, and database uses UUID as a primary key. Okay, so let's create our main.go file here, and I'll be using pgx as the Postgres driver. That's probably the best driver out there for Postgres in Go. So if you haven't used it, go check it out. Let's quickly... Okay, so let's import pgx. Oh, let me just copy this whole code block. And I'll just change this part. I think it's Postgres in my case, and just pass. And uh, yeah, let's just use Postgres database. But first, let's create our table that will have some unique identifier and maybe some other fields, right? So instead of query row, we'll use, I believe it's execute. Now, maybe we don't need to scan anything. And we'll just write our query. So what do we write? Uh, create probably table, if not exists, we'll call it ULIT test. I believe we open the brackets, right? And then do ID, UID, primary key. Then I also want actually to save the, the kind because we'll be inserting both UUIDs and ULITs. So I want to compare them in the future. Let's just do have text. Um, everything not null, and then maybe some value. 
and value could be maybe text as well as we'll not know. So now we can create the table. Let me write a function, uh, say insert UID. What do we pass our maybe connection? I believe it's pgx.on. What else do we pass there? Maybe a value, right? A string. And actually, because we'll be calling some database functions that require the context, let me just pass the context right here. Um, so we don't use background. We actually have quite a few of them already. It doesn't matter for this exercise, but just maybe background just at the top level, right? And so now we need to write the query itself. So we can copy this block right from here. So what do we have? Uh, insert into ULIT test um, ID kind value values so one kind will be let's say uid and then we pass the value um, so we have the value we don't have the id yet right and so if you use postgres or maybe some other databases as well and use the type uid you can generate the random UID directly in your database. For example, in Postgres, there are extensions and default functionality. For example, in Postgres, there is a module UID OSSP that can generate random UID of different versions for us. For example, we can use the function UID generate v4 um, as a default value or directly inside of your query to generate the UID. So right, quite handy. Another option would be obviously to generate UID on the application side um, with UID v4. For example, we can use a, a popular um, UID package from Google, right? That's quite easy to use. So you use UID.new, I believe, and or new v4 and pass it to the database then. So let's maybe take this approach, right? That's, so let's import that first. And here we'll have our ID as UID. Uh, sorry, dot new, maybe just new, right? Cool. We can then pass it directly to our query, right? And uh, exec fail. Otherwise, maybe let's print a message that we inserted. So print f. I believe it's id dot string, right? Cool. Okay, now let's call this function after we uh, basically create the table, right? So we can use insert uid. We pass the context. Um, connection and some values. So, right, we don't care which values, but we do a few inserts. Maybe let's do five and then have different values there. Cool. So that would be UUIDs. And then let's do the same for ULID now. So the function will be very similar. It should be quite the same. And we'll rename it to, um, right, so ULID here, connection value, right? Um, change this part later and um, the kind will be you lead let's change the message here as you've seen in the beginning, there is also a Go package to generate units or just to work with them, to convert them to UIDs and so forth it belongs to OKLog OK account on GitHub, so let's have a look um, right, so that's this, OKLog OK slash ULIT if you scroll, yeah, just make sure that we use the version v2, that's the latest. And otherwise, the API is quite simple. There is ulit.make, uh, and there are a few other functions to parse, to convert, and so forth, right? Um, but here we'll only need ulit.make. So let's go back to our code, import this package. And instead of uid.new, we will do as in the documentation ulit.make. Now, as you can see, what's great, we didn't have to change anything in this function, right? So we didn't need to convert ULIT to UID. It happens automatically. It's because, as we mentioned before, ULITs are fully compatible with UUIDs, right? So we don't need to convert anything. Unfortunately, inside of our query, we cannot just use some uh, magic function like generate ULIT uh, inside the Postgres, though I believe there must be extensions that can do that. If you used any of them, because I haven't, uh, let me know in the comments. But generating in the application is actually quite a great idea because you usually use the, these IDs uh, for something else, right? So you still need to get them out. Cool, so we have this function. Let's call it... Um, similar as we did with UUIDs right here, right? So just ULIT, again, CTX, 
connection and maybe similar values, right? So maybe even the same values and do it five times, right? Two, three, four, five. All right, before running this code, let's make sure that it's all clean. So we have the Postgres connection. We connect to some hard-coded URL. Um, obviously, don't do that in production. We just have it for the learning uh, purposes here. We create the table if not exists. I believe that's the right syntax. And uh, yeah, then we insert into values. Should be correct. Okay, so let's give it a try. As I mentioned, I have Postgres already running. So we are in correct folder. We do go run main.go. Actually, let's do go <clears throat> more tidy first, just to make sure that I have all the dependencies. And then we can do main.go. All right, so we inserted a few UUIDs. We can see that they're all random and different, all looking good. And then we have our Ulits. As you can see, the first half is a little bit similar, right? And you can already guess because the timestamp was probably the same, right? As we generated very quickly five records. And so as you can see, Ulits are a little bit shorter, right? And they're URL safe and just uh, look a little bit better. You've probably seen many URLs that go like, I don't know, slash users. I type it directly here. Then this long, 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 our UUID, right? And then I don't know, summary, right? Um, these URLs just generally look much better if there is ULIT inside of them. Uh, it's a little bit easier to copy and paste them. And yeah, obviously it's just maybe visual uh, benefits, but nevertheless, I think they're quite valuable. Anyway, let's have a look at the database and see how these IDs are placed inside of our table. So let's connect to our Postgres instance locally. And what do we do? let's select first um, everything, right? Let's say select everything from you lead test. Um, yep. As you can see in the database, though, they all look like just normal UUID. Again, the first part is based on the timestamp, so the first part is similar, right? But otherwise, the format is the same. So in terms of for the database, it's it's absolutely the same uh, because at the end, it's still UUID v4. So now let's select all the records of the kind UUID and let's say order by the ID in ascending order. So let's do select everything from, again, our unit test, where kind equals UID and maybe order by ID. The UUIDs that we inserted are completely random and they don't correlate to the insert order, right? So that's why we see the result like that where the value is completely random. Um, if we do the same with ULIT though, see what happens. As you can see, the records returned are in the same order as they've been inserted. That's because ULIT's are lexicographically sortable. That's a really great feature. Um, in Postgres, otherwise for UUIDv4, you would need another column like created at maybe, or a timestamp, and then sort by this column. And there can be collisions as well in this column. While with IDs, it's kind of nicer. You sometimes don't need this column and can just order by the ID ascending or descending and so forth. And it's shorter at the user end, right? As I mentioned, it's quite easy to convert ULITs to UID before. You can do it inside of your Go code. You can do, for example, in this OKLog ULIT package, maybe you can do ID.bytes, I believe then. Um, there's a bytes function, right? And then it's basically the uh, raw bytes. That's uh, the marshaling actually for us happens here. So we didn't need to do that, but you can take the bytes and then uh, create a UID before out of those bytes. Um, there are obviously different websites that maybe manually you can convert, like ULIT tools, I believe that's the one, uh, where you can generate a random ULIT, right? And uh, see its timestamp and see the UID before representation. So sometimes it could be helpful when you want to verify some record from the database that's in UID before format and you don't know what's the ULIT out of it because maybe the user sent you the ULIT. Um, but that's usually easy to do, right? That also tells that the migration to ULIT is quite straightforward because in the database you don't have to change anything. It's pretty much only on the code level where you generate those IDs. There is really no major drawback to using ULITs and it's very easy to migrate to using ULITs, but you also need to understand its limitation. And it's maybe only in the high volume write systems where you expect a high volume of inserts 
And there at specific timestamps, you can have the kind of hot uh, spots where the data is very similar, right? Um, but that's for very, very uh, high volume write systems. Um, there are other alternative identifiers out there like uh, CUID and NanoID. If you use them, let me know in the comments and tell me what your experience has been like. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you later.